um, fatigue is one of the most common symptoms, one of the most common complaints, but I think one of the most misunderstood symptoms when it comes to chronic illnesses. And this is what I will be diving uh, deep into, uh, going beyond the typical uh, causes that you might be uh, knowing about or you're told about because there are many others uh, and there are specifically five uh, underlying causes uh, that you know typically may get overlooked, which is what I'm going to talk about today. So if you um, if you're dealing with chronic fatigue, uh, if you have been trying to figure out why is it you know going beyond getting proper sleep or you know uh, dealing with maybe low iron levels, there are many other reasons behind common fatigue, and this is what I will be diving deeper into. So if you uh, like what I have to say, I have uh, you know my brand new coaching program which um, enrollment starts for healing from within it's a six month comprehensive and transformative coaching program for women with autoimmune uh, diseases and other chronic health issues it opens for uh, enrollment end of this month i'll be sharing the link below so schedule your free 45 minute clarity call where we uh, you know delve deeper into what's really going on and see if you're a right fit for each other so typically, uh, uh, so I'll, I'll share the link here. Typically, what uh, when we talk about fatigue, uh, we look at things like lack of sleep, uh, which is uh, certainly a big trigger, but uh, also or nutrient poor diet or chronic stress. And I'm going to touch upon some of these a bit today. But there are other underlying factors which are also at play here, which is what I'm going to be focusing on more today. So uh, the problem with these, uh, with uh, you know, a very um, common thing like a fatigue is that it's a non-specific symptom, and there are certain factors. Uh, if they are not addressed, typically we can end up getting, uh, you know, being medicated with things like antidepressants, etc. Simply because, you know, uh, conventional medicine has not really taken the time, uh, or has not really understood, you know, how you need to sort of figure out what are the underlying imbalances which have to be addressed in the case of chronic fatigue. So, uh, of course, I am talking about chronic fatigue, uh, which, you know, is fatigue that sort of doesn't really go away, no matter how much sleep you get, no matter, you know, uh, you know, even if you're eating healthy, sometimes that is also the case, but there are other things which are preventing you from seeing uh, energy levels, good energy levels, feeling uh, sort of, you know, that you're ready to go when you wake up in the morning. A lot of these things are extremely common, especially with the clients that I deal with, uh, women with autoimmune diseases. Uh, fatigue is a, is a one of the fatigue and chronic pain. These are the two main symptoms that typically uh, are the ones that most people struggle with. And the number one, so there are, I'm going to talk about five things that you need to look out for. And the number one thing that you need to look out for and address is gut dysfunction. And gut dysfunction can show up as small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which is also called SIBO, which is typically, you know, when there is bacterial overgrowth, but in the wrong place, which is in your small intestine. And it gives host to a multitude of other symptoms like bloating, pain, etc. Again, extremely common with, uh, you know, in cases of autoimmune diseases, chronic infections, uh, dysbiosis and fungal overgrowth. Again, yeast overgrowth, fungal overgrowth is also quite common in case of uh, chronic conditions, especially in case of autoimmune diseases where there is a uh, you know, major connection with gut health and gut dysbiosis. And it can also be food sensitivity. So all these are related to gut dysfunction. Some of them contribute to gut dysfunction are triggers for it. So unless you're sort of addressing this you're not really addressing the underlying causes of your chronic fatigue because what happens as a result of this gut uh, dysfunction is that there is decreased digestion and absorption and what i mean by that is that you know minerals like zinc and magnesium which are necessary for so many of our body's functions and in particular zinc for immune uh, you know optimal immune function immune health uh, magnesium for a whole host of uh, functions in the body, including energy production in, in a many different path, using many different pathways. Uh, I'm going to talk about that a bit later on. And of course, iron, uh, you know, iron deficiency is very common in my part of the world, which leads to anemia, uh, low hemoglobin levels, which is a very, very common contributor to fatigue. 
uh, uh, you know, and B12, B12 uh, amongst other B vitamins uh, is also required for energy production. So as you can see, the downstream effect of poor digestion leads to these kind of deficiencies and, uh, you know, and energy production, right? So you can see the connection between gut dysfunction leading uh, down to fatigue, uh, which sort of doesn't go away. You can also, because of gut dysfunction, poor gut health, uh, you know, you can also have immune dysregulation. So it's like a vicious cycle that you sort of get stuck in. Uh, there can be chronic inflammation because the immune system is dysregulated um, and it never sort of gets switched off. The immune response is not getting switched off. Uh, impaired detoxification. So all of these sort of go hand in hand with poor gut health, gut dysfunction. Uh, and all of these contribute in one way or the other to fatigue. So this is the number one thing that you need to look out for. And uh, at the end, I will share with you a few key action steps that you can start taking today uh, to address these imbalances. The number two thing in case of chronic fatigue and particularly fatigue that comes with uh, an autoimmune condition is mitochondrial dysfunction. Again, extremely common specifically in cases of um, you know, autoimmune and severe chronic illnesses. Uh, mitochondria is the battery or the powerhouse of your cell. This is where the energy production happens. And ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is the uh, you know, energy unit of your cell. But mitochondrial health goes far beyond energy production. Of course, uh, energy is what we are talking about here, uh, low energy production, impaired energy production, because of impaired mitochondrial function is what leads to kind of chronic fatigue, you know, which sort of gets prolonged. Uh, but also uh, mitochondria, mitochondrial health is important because they are key regulators of cellular uh, vitality and longevity, right? They determine uh, your um, the health of each and every cell in your body so it's that important to you know have some kind of focus on your mitochondrial health this is not something that typically i find that most people are aware of which is why i chose to talk about this topic uh, as leading up to chronic fatigue and as far as uh, you know mitochondrial health is concerned as far as energy production is concerned more is not uh, better uh, in what i mean is that it's not that uh, creating more and more energy is going to help because with more energy we create more waste it's you know it's like saying that i will my foot will be stuck on the accelerator and uh, in the car and i will never take off my foot of the you know of the accelerator and i'll keep moving because that will create more and more heat in the case of our bodies what happens is that if we never take the foot off uh, you know of the accelerator then it will create more oxidative stress and damage so there is that balance that which needs to be maintained uh, which is important for uh, and this balance uh, energy production is important for vitality and survival so this is not about more and more it's more about balance and mitochondrial optimal mitochondrial health this uh, deteriorates as we grow older simply because of the wear and tear of the uh, mitochondria of you know internal wear and tear of the micro mitochondria due to the energy production uh, that has been going on for years uh, so this is a normal process of aging and uh, you know that happens but there are certain things that you can do uh, in terms of increasing your energy production by making certain changes in your diet and in your lifestyle there, so there are ways that you can turn this around to a large extent uh, particularly true in the case of chronic illnesses like autoimmune conditions so the uh, number one thing that you need to look out for is um, basically your gut function number two is mitochondrial uh, you know gut dysfunction Mito uh, number two is mitochondrial health um, or mitochondrial dysfunction in this particular case number three is stress chronic stress I can't emphasize it enough that by not having some form of stress management uh, or being just aware of your own stress response, uh, you know, the bearing that it is, has on each and every function in your body. Uh, we talk about uh, typically physical stressors, but mental, emotional and physical all play a huge role in that. Uh, what often ends up having, uh, you know, happening, which is true for, I think, most women living stressful hectic lives uh, that we all live in today especially living in urban areas uh, you know uh, uh, being surrounded by uh, toxins all the time 
uh, stressful thoughts, running, you know, running all the time, all this has an effect on your uh, energy production. And uh, the uh, thing is that we often end up being wired and tired when we go to bed at night. And because we don't have an understanding of how uh, sleep really works and how you need to create a bedtime ritual, uh, sleep hygiene, you know, is key here. What happens is that uh, poor sleep, chronic stress, uh, you know, it often leads us to uh, do things that are not really beneficial uh, in terms of, you know, reaching out for high sugar diets, uh, refined carbohydrates, because we need that energy production at all costs and the brain will do whatever it takes to make sure that you get that, which is where comfort foods come from. Uh, at the end of the day, when you are tired, you will not typically reach for you know, a bowl of salad, you will end up reaching most likely for some uh, sugary desserts, which will give you that momentary calmness. It will calm your uh, nervous system because it will create all these good neurotransmitters, or, you know, chemicals like dopamine and serotonin. But at the end of the day, it comes at a cost, right? And the cost is typically uh, abdominal fat and other health issues, high insulin levels, insulin resistance. So these are some of the things that sort of, you know, uh, is a, you know, ha has an effect. Uh, elevated cortisol levels, which then leads to further inflammation, further fatigue, pain, you know, and impair uh, energy production, right? So this is uh, the number three thing is to, you know, uh, first understand that, you know, your stress is uh, something that is at, you know, chronic stress is what I'm talking about here. It needs to be addressed. You need to uh, take steps to ensure that you're getting adequate rest in your day. Uh, you know, have certain self-care practices. This is particularly true for women, where I find that we put, tend to put ourselves last in, in the whole scheme of things and our own health uh, sort of is at the bottom of our to-do list. Uh, and that doesn't really serve us. So one of the first things that I do with my clients is to first assess their areas of self-care and then make sure that we work on those particular areas. Awareness is always the first step. And then work on those particular areas, uh, you know, to put some kind of plan in place. It's not enough to have the right diets. It's not enough to exercise, etc. You also need to have the kind of uh, awareness to get uh, sort of to take these breaks. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter how busy you are. Uh, it's always uh, about making time for things that are truly important. So when you change the way you think, you will find that you will take out time for your health too. And this is exactly what my clients uh, do in my coaching program. And as I mentioned, it opens for enrollment end of the month. It's a six month uh, coaching program for women with autoimmune diseases so that you can start getting better and get your life back by making targeted changes in your life using a root cause approach. And we're talking about uh, the five things that you need to look out for if you're dealing with chronic fatigue and these are uh, because fatigue as i mentioned because fatigue is such a, a kind of a you know unspecific no, a non-specific symptom it becomes really difficult to understand what the underlying causes are beyond maybe a few things like anemia etc but there are a, a, you know few different layers that you need to be aware of which needs to be addressed one way or the other so that you see a sustained improvement right and the first thing that i mentioned was gut dysfunction gut dysbiosis which also goes hand in hand with many of the chronic illnesses with many autoimmune conditions the second thing that i talked about was mitochondrial health and mitochondrial dysfunction uh, which is obviously a key player in energy production uh, the third thing is you know mental and emotional stress uh, all kinds of stress uh, which we may not be aware of that we are holding in different parts of our body and how it impacts our immune system. It impacts pretty much everything else, right? Everything in your body. And we may not be doing much about it. And the fourth thing that I wanted to look out for, uh, the, you know, sort of uh, be aware of is chronic infections, right? Um, so I'm not going to be talking much about chronic infections, but, but just to bring it to your awareness. Um, and I'm going to put out, share with you a resource. Uh, it's the book called Chronic, actually. I think it's called Chronic Hidden Causes of Autoimmune Pandemic. Uh, and it talks about these uh, various infections that are at the root of many autoimmune conditions specifically, but, you know, but they've also been connected to other, uh, health, you know, chronic illnesses as well. And some of the key things are viral infections like Epstein-Barr virus, 
or maybe even HHV, like the human herpes virus. These are very, very common. In fact, HHV or the human herpes virus has been uh, shown to be associated with um, those who have autoimmune diseases like lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, Sjogren's syndrome. So it's, it's extremely common in uh, people with these kind of uh, you know, diagnosis. You also have bacterial infections of all kinds uh, and uh, including um, Lyme disease. Uh, you know, I'm forgetting the name of the bacteria, but that's also implicated in many, many of the chronic uh, health issues, including autoimmune conditions. So these are the typically the hidden underlying viral, uh, you know, viral and uh, bacterial chronic infections that are ongoing and which have a huge role to play in energy production or energy, you know, impairment in energy production, right? So if you want to delve deeper into this topic, make sure that you check out the book Chronic, which is uh, the hidden causes of pandemic. And, um, you know, well, you know, if you're watching this live, uh, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you want to share any thoughts, make sure that you do that uh, in the comments below. And if you're watching this on replay, you can always, uh, sort of share any thoughts that you have, any questions, and I'll maybe make sure to sort of get back to you, right? Um, so I have been talking about five things that you need to look out for in the case if you're dealing with chronic fatigue uh, with or without any particular diagnosis. And the first thing that I've mentioned is gut dysbiosis of any kind. The second thing that I've mentioned is mitochondrial dysfunction. Uh, which is obviously a key player in energy production. And if anything happens, uh, sort of, you know, over there, and I'll talk about some of the steps that you can take at the end to so make sure that you stay till the end. The third thing that I mentioned is stress. Uh, and obviously, I'm talking about chronic stress. Uh, the fourth thing is chronic infections. These are typically underlying hidden infections that sort of never get addressed. And the fifth, uh, but not the least, is hormonal imbalances. Uh, and I'm talking about insulin resistance here. I'm talking about hypothyroidism here. Uh, I'm talking about depressed cortisol levels. All of them have a role to play in energy production. For example, uh, if you have high levels of insulin resistance, which goes hand in hand with you know, uh, def uh, magnesium deficiency, what happens is your glucose is not able to get into each and every cell of your body. So you're, which is typically the case in a lot of people who are obese, uh, and what happens is that they, while they're having, uh, you know, the food and they might be eating absolutely healthy, the cells are surrounded by glucose, but it's just not able to get into the cell. And that's what uh, sort of so cells do not get the glucose to create energy. So all of these play a role. Uh, thyroid is important for metabolism, but if you have poor thyroid function, so that, that also sort of gets impaired. Uh, and that also has an effect on energy production. Then if you have uh, low and depressed cortisol levels, which typically happens again, very common in those with uh, autoimmune conditions. If you have low levels of cortisol, that also impairs, uh, you know, T3 uh, conversion. It also has an you know, impact, major impact on your energy production. So all of these hormonal imbalances have a role to play. Uh, as far as chronic fatigue is there as well. So just to summarize the five things that I mentioned that you need to look out for is one, gut dysfunction. Number two uh, is mitochondrial dysfunction. Uh, number three, uh, stress. And I'm talking about chronic stress here. Uh, number four, chronic infections. And number five, hormonal imbalances. So now that you, you know, you sort of have an idea about sort of what's going on. And this may be uh, that it's, you know, you've already taken care of your sleep, you're eating uh, healthy foods, but you're just not getting the energy uh, that you're looking for. Again, extremely common with uh, my own coaching clients that they're getting eight, nine hours of sleep, but they, when they wake up in the morning, uh, they don't feel refreshed, right? This is extremely common with many chronic illnesses, especially the a client that I work with, which is uh, women with autoimmune diseases, like fatigue, as I mentioned, and pain, chronic fatigue and chronic pain are the two most common symptoms, right? And um, some very, very basic, but very foundational steps that you can start taking today is, of course, starting with the gut. And I, that's, there's a reason why I started with gut dysfunction, because gut health is key here as far as getting key nutrients are concerned, which are necessary and critical for energy production. Things like 
uh, magnesium. Actually, magnesium, if I had to mention one particular uh, nutrient that uh, you need to sort of, you know, I, I'll mention two key things. But the first thing, the first nutrient that I would like to mention here is magnesium. Magnesium is critical for energy production. And that's something which is unfortunately deficient in the soil because of which is deficient in our foods. And then on top of that, if you're not really having nutrient rich diet, uh, if you're having more of processed foods, not enough vegetables, not enough plants, then in any case, we are also not picking up, uh, you know, getting magnesium because as you would realize, we don't have a store or a pantry in our body. We need to get these nutrients from uh, plants uh, or from the food that we eat. So in that sense, food is medicine. Uh, we can't just pro, you know make manufacture these nutrients out of thin air so in gut health is important and as far as gut health is concerned uh, one key area that i want to sort of highlight here which you need to focus on is your stomach acid production um if you know and i'm not going to get into all the reasons why there is poor stomach acid production uh, but one of the main ones actually is obviously gut dysbiosis, where there is an imbalance in the gut microbes. The other one is stress, actually. Chronic stress by itself uh, impairs um, you know, stomach acid production. And stomach acid production is key for many different things. Uh, but the ones that I want to highlight here is to absorb these key minerals like magnesium, zinc, and I'm, that's the that's connection between stomach acid and magnesium, B12. I have uh, touched upon that briefly, uh, where I mentioned that B vitamins are also very uh, important for energy production. So as you can see, this is a connection, also another connection between your gut health and, uh, you know, and, and your energy production. So if you're not producing enough stomach acid, and there are many different reasons why your body chooses not to do so. Um, but you're not going to be absorbing uh, these kind of these key nutrients. And uh, in fact, uh, you know, magnesium deficiency is extremely rampant. And this is one of the first things that I address when I uh, start working with clients. Uh, and of course, there are other aspects of gut health, but this is this I find to be extremely common. And of course, we follow a five step process. The first step of which is uh, eliminating foods which are uh, you know, creating inflammation. Uh, this is typically in the case of autoimmune conditions, gluten, dairy, but there can also be other things like uh, nightshades. Uh, it can be soy, it can be eggs, there can be other uh, food sensitivities. And food sensitivities, uh, if you don't know already, go hand in hand with, especially with any gut related chronic illness, uh, particularly in the case, uh, true in the case of autoimmune diseases. Uh, because gut health is one of the key factors in autoimmunity. So, so as you can see, this, this, this is the sort of interconnectedness between gut, energy production, autoimmunity, immune function, and hormonal imbalances. They are all sort of working together or you know, creating uh, either health or moving towards disease, disease progression. Uh, but the, the key here, you know, the, what you need to take away from this session is that there are so many steps that you can take to ensure that uh, you are sort of putting in place the foundation for long-term health creation and it doesn't start by addressing each and every symptom so if you notice that i am not talking about addressing a particular symptom of fatigue i'm talking about addressing the root causes here like what's really going on underneath why is your body not able to produce enough energy right that's what i am focusing on right now so elimination diet is uh, the first step, not the last, we start by taking out certain foods we know are problematic. That helps the immune system to start coming down. It helps the inflammation to uh, go down. And of course, we do other things like uh, move away from uh, processed foods, refined carbs, etc., which also help in um, making sure that the insulin level goes down. So all of this also has an impact on improvement in gut health, leading to uh, you know better energy production. Then you also have, uh, of course, mitochondrial function, uh, which we talked about, which is a key aspect of, uh, you know, your the amount of energy that your body is able to produce. And as far as mitochondrial function is concerned, as far as energy production by the mitochondria is concerned, uh, breathing uh, and taking in oxygen, you know, we, we talk so much about magnesium, iron, etc. We forget that breathing itself is key here. Uh, because your body needs oxygen, your mitochondria needs oxygen 
to create energy. So if you're not breathing properly, if you're a shallow breather, you know, what happens is that we don't really notice, uh, you know, how shallow our breathing becomes when we are stressed and we feel chronically stressed all the time. We are often so disconnected from our bodies. You know, we I find that uh, you know, a lot uh, in, in uh, many adults and uh, it's very common in you know with my clients that they're so disconnected from their bodies that they don't really realize how much stress they are holding and as a result of that their breathing has become shallow so they're not taking enough, enough oxygen there can be of course other reasons for not taking enough oxygen like sleep apnea etc so if you're a, if you're snoring etc know that you know it, that might be an issue as well so you're not getting or asthma for that matter but breathing is such a you know foundational concept that we often you know sort of uh, neglected because you know when we start talking about magnesium b12 etc but i wanted to touch upon this that uh, doing deep breathing learning to pace yourself taking regular breaks and focusing on your breath uh, doing yoga for that matter right yoga is brilliant for if not for anything else for breathing for getting enough oxygen because the two main things that you need to sort of make sure that your body is getting is uh, magnesium and oxygen as i mentioned that if there's only one thing that you take away from today's session is that if you just focus on these two aspects uh, you know of uh, in ensuring that your body is getting enough oxygen and your body is getting enough magnesium you will see a marked improvement in your energy levels right so there's nothing else that you do and you just ensure that you're taking in uh, you know you're getting enough magnesium and you're getting enough oxygen you will see a difference right so that's that's how i'm you know sort of making it as simple as possible for you and of course you have other things like b vitamins uh, things that i haven't really talked about because i think you know these five things sort of uh, are overlooked uh, it can be a, uh, anemia iron deficiency anemia it can be uh, you know other forms of anemia as well macrocytic anemia microcytic so there can be other things but those are typically things that do get addressed i find so i today i wanted to focus on things that typically are not really sort of uh, you know looked into maybe tests are not done uh, so you know that's the whole that was the whole point of doing this uh, session if you have any questions from what i've discussed make sure that you put it in the comments below uh, so that i can sort of uh, address it right now and as i mentioned uh, you know these are the five things that you sort of need to make sure that you are sort of you know either you are addressing or uh, your practitioner is addressing is one is gut health gut dysfunction and i talked about uh, you know how we can start improving gut health by eliminating certain foods uh, what i did not talk about is uh, eating hygiene uh, you know how we eat is as important as what we are eating uh, the second thing that i talked about was mitochondrial dysfunction uh, mitochondrial health is extremely important the third thing was uh, stress chronic stress whether it's mental emotional or uh, physiological the fourth um, chronic infections and i uh, also mentioned that there is a book called chronic uh, hidden causes of autoimmune pandemic and i found it to be extremely good up you know it delves deep into the topic of chronic underlying infections and number five uh, all kinds of hormonal imbalances that go hand in hand with many of these chronic uh, uh, conditions but in particularly in the case of autoimmune diseases and i've also uh, sort of outlined a few steps you know, a few things, key things that you need to focus on and a few steps that you can start, you know, taking today. And uh, yeah, uh, which is, and I talked about uh, gut health, elimination diet, breathing, uh, and two key aspects that can help you to get started with improving your energy production. One is making sure that you're getting enough magnesium and the second is making sure that you're getting enough oxygen. So, um, as I mentioned, my health coaching program opens for enrollment end of this month. Uh, if you would like to explore and understand better how you know uh, how this uh, entire program works, um, it is a three-part framework that I follow. And just like I simplified the whole process of energy production and chronic fatigue, underlying causes of chronic fatigue for you, the first part of the framework is simplifying. Second part is reconnecting. So it's about connecting the dots between really what's going on, what are the underlying causes, the uh, triggers, and uh, also connecting with yourself, with your body. Right? That's a big part. So you, uh, you know, in my coaching program, we talk a lot about 
uh, not being at war with your body, but using your body or making your body your friend to heal from within. And the last part of the coaching program is sustaining. It's not enough to get better or get well. It's also about staying well. So all of these aspects is something that uh, I focus on in the coaching program. So if you're if you would like to explore uh, how it would be to work with me, make sure that you schedule a free 45 minute clarity call. Uh, I'm going to be sharing the link um, with you and I will see you again soon.